Hi, this is Peter at Berserk Arcade at BerserkArcade.com and this is tutorial 182. Now we left off our last tutorial, we're just about to start doing our hair. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Unity. And actually before I start that, I did notice one little thing I missed in our scaling videos. And our horizontal scale works fine, it makes them fatter and skinnier according to the slider. Uh, but the slider for our height is actually backwards. So as you scale up, it's actually making them shorter and if you scale down it's actually making them taller. Now that's a pretty quick fix so I'm just going to throw that in here. Uh, let me just go over to Mono Develop. I've already got the script open and you see we have it set up to have the min height and then the max height and if we go back into Unity and take another quick look uh, the first value which would be the value displayed at the top is well the first value you pass in in my case it was the min height and the bottom one's going to be the max height. So we'll just switch those two values around and everything should be good. So we'll just cut and paste that in like that. We'll save it off. I'm going to head back over to Unity and we'll give it a quick check. So here we go. We notice instead of uh, it starting down around here for the little slider, it starts up here. And as we scroll up, it does get taller. And there we go. So it's working as we wanted it now. So let's close that off. Uh, let's start taking a look at how I have my hair set up. Now I've thrown them all in my resources folder because, well, I'm going to be using my the resources.load function quite a bit to keep the uh, first few levels very small, or just to keep the actual uh, what what it has to load when the game first starts up uh, very small. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've used the character folder that we have, and I've gone ahead and thrown the hair in there. And of course, if you open up the hair, I'm going to follow the same format that I did for faces or the heads, because uh, I liked it. So, you know, as you can see, when you open it up, you have the human. So this does open up the possibility to add more races quite easily. And of course, you open up human, you have male and female. I have no hair for the females yet, so I'm just going to be focusing on the male ones for now. And you open it up, you have materials, meshes, and textures. Let's go ahead and start off with materials. Uh, I do have, well, the package that I have from Fro Games does include uh, materials for each hair color. But if you actually look at the materials, uh, the only difference between them is the texture. So we should be able to get rid of all these materials and just have one material that we just swap the texture with for our hair color. So that's going to be one of the goals uh, in the next few tutorials. And let's actually go down and look at our textures. Uh, I've gone ahead and created an extra one here. So it would, normally comes with one two three four five it com normally comes with five and this one here was called uh, uh, hair default or something like that uh, but it was the exact same as the brown hair so all I really did is just load it up into a graphics program pick whatever one you want Photoshop GIMP uh, double clicking it opens it up in preview and let me just quickly show you how I just changed I just applied a tint to it uh, so you can easily do this pretty much in any program. If you're using a Mac and you're fairly new to it, uh, this is how I did it. Uh, this is black. Let's go ahead and make it blue. Uh, so maybe you want your characters to have blue hair. So I'm just going to apply uh, some tinting to it and increase the saturation. And then if I was to save this off, obviously save it as a different name, so it would be hair underscore blue, all my characters could have blue hair. Maybe tint it a little bit less green but you should get the idea of how that works. Uh, I don't want to save that. So anyway, I've got these materials for the hair. And if you notice down here, I have all these other materials that go with the meshes for each of the six, 60 different hairstyles that it comes with. I'm not going to be using these. I'm pretty sure I can get by without having to use any of these, which is great because, well, that's 60 materials I can delete here. And another... Well, four here, so there's 64 materials I can get rid of and just create one material that I can use for all the hairs. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the meshes. Now, since this is a mesh that's going to be applied to our character, uh, I'm going to want to use our mesh offset. And we made this during the equipment uh, scene. And let's just take a quick look at it. We're done with this one, so I'll close that. Uh, it just simply has three public variables, so they're exposed in the inspector. And it's just for positional offset, rotational offset, and for scale offset. 
Uh, let's just quickly demonstrate how I'm going to be using that. So I'm going to, uh, we don't want to close resources, but we do want to close character. I haven't moved my character models up there yet, but I will be. And I'm just going to drag a muscular one in here. And sure enough, I'll just throw him here. We'll move him up. And we're going to want to rotate him 180 degrees just so he's facing towards us. And let's just zoom in on him a bit. So there we go. We got our little muscular guy up there. Uh, let me just go ahead and select him. Uh, let's select the hair mount so that's exposed. These are some of the problems that we're going to encounter that we'll probably want to have to, well, we are going to have to overcome. And I'm just going to take any hairstyle. I'm just going to start with uh, 2 5. I'm just going to instantiate it into our scene just by dropping it in. And then I'm going to take it and make it a child of the hair mount. And I'll just open it up and zero out its position. And let me just shrink this up a bit. And there we go. That one seems to actually be positioned okay. Uh, there's a little bit of head poking through here. But, you know, to be honest, I'm okay with that. If you're not, this is where you'll want to take your uh, offset and add it. Now, we can't add it to these here. You can't add the scripts to them. But what I'm going to have to do is go through and make a prefab for each of these hairs. And I actually have started to do that in a, earlier. Yep, right here, hair. And I've got quite a ways to go. So once you create your prefab, it's just as simple as dragging and dropping um, the offset onto it. And we will be going over it because I know there's probably going to be at least you know a couple hairstyles that don't line up perfectly with my model. But what I wanted to quickly show was the problem of when we put a helmet on our character. So let me keep the resources open. I'm going to go down to my items, meshes, armors already open. And let's just grab helmet one. I'll just drag that into the scene. And let me select my character again, the muscular character. I'll look at my helmet mount. And I'm going to take that helmet and drag it onto it. And then I'll just zero out its position. And here we go. He has his helmet on. And let me shrink this up a bit. One of the things I'm going to want to do is get the hair to disappear. Uh, there's no point in rendering the hair anymore if you have a helmet on. And as you can see with these models, uh, the hair actually pokes through. Now, sure, I could probably play around with the scale on the helmet. Uh, and I might be able to get it to where all the hair is hidden. Uh, but I have 60 different hairstyles, and I really don't want to sit there and spend that much time uh, playing with it, especially since with these models, it's set up pretty easily. If I go ahead and select my hair, it was uh, 2.5. I'm going to come back into the hair. So let me see. That was 2.5. Uh, all of these uh, hairs are put into sets. So 2.1 to 2.5 is basically one set of hair. And there's long versions, short versions, balding versions, uh, both long and short. And then there's also one where it doesn't have any uh, hair on its head, but you'll always have the facial hair one. And these are always the ones. So 3-1, one, and he's got his eyebrows and his mustache. 4-1, eyebrows, different style, mustache. Cat playing with toy. <laughs> and I... As you go through, as you can see, there's quite a few different ones here. Let's look at 12 ones. And if we were to look at 12 five. But what we're going to want to do, at least what I'm going to be doing with it, is I'm just going to go ahead and make the hair disappear. So 2 five. Uh, I can either do this by just turning the render off, uh, but I'll probably just actually destroy it. So while he's wearing a helmet, no hair for him, at least on his head. But what I am going to want to do is instantiate the hair without the the head hair so basically his facial hair so let me go ahead take that I'll drag it on to his hair mount and zero out its position and as you can see you know he's got his eyebrows back so if I were to, when he puts his helmet on we use the version that doesn't have any head hair and when he doesn't have his helmet on we'll just use the one that actually has head hair. 
Uh, hopefully that makes sense. If not, we'll be covering it in the next few tutorials. And it doesn't look like the hair is perfectly scaled right on this model. If you notice, the hair comes down just below the eyes. And if we scroll over, it looks a little bit different on that side. So it looks like I am going to have to scale just a little bit on some of these, but that's okay. Uh, that's why we have our mesh offset script. And that's pretty much all I want to go over. Uh, so in the next video, I'll probably have all of these replaced. Well, I'm going to have to anyway. I have all of these replaced with actual prefabs as opposed to uh, just having the, the mesh imported from your 3D modeling package. And of course, you can tell the difference between the little script on it and prefabs don't have that. But anyway, that's it for this video. And I'll see you in the next one where we'll actually start uh, scripting and setting everything up. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.